and you're watching NBC 16 News at 530. Breaking tonight, a person is battling life-threatening injuries after a shooting at an apartment complex in Eugene. Good evening, I'm Kendall Bartley. Alan Matthews has the night off. NBC 16's Angelina Dixon is near the scene on, Kins in, on Kinsrow Avenue. Angelina, this is the second shooting in the area within the past couple of days. <laughs> That's right, Kendall. This happened around 2.45 this afternoon after a report of a gunshot. Police later found a person with life-threatening injuries. We've been told the person was near the playground of the Willamette Garden Apartments when this happened. Neighbors we heard from say they heard arguing and screaming. Police are still here with the metal detector trying to locate the bullet shell casing. So far, police have not yet identified a suspect. We'll bring you the latest when this develops. Reporting live in Eugene tonight, I'm Angelina Dixon. Back to you, Kendall. Thank you, Angelina. And regarding that other shooting, it happened over the weekend and police arrested 21 year old Anthony Baker after they say he shot a woman on Commons Drive early Saturday morning. Baker was arrested in Springfield. He was arraigned today on charges of attempted murder, assault and felon in possession of a firearm. He'll be back in court June 23rd. NBC 16 News will, of course, continue to follow these breaking news updates. When you're away from your TV, visit our website NBC16.com, our Facebook page, KMTR News or download our KMTR News up on your phone for free. Moving on to weather now with a live look over Eugene. The clouds have rolled in. Chevy, the rain is coming down and it seems like that might be the case for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, for many hours here tonight mm -hmm. into tomorrow, then another chance for rain Thursday before we hit a dry streak and have a very big warm up uh, this weekend. Let's take a look at now at our uh, current climate data. So 68 was our high today. We were definitely down from that due to the rain and 51 was our low temperature. We're usually at 70. Wait till this weekend. We're going to go way above that. That's for sure. Fire danger, uh, fire potential rather is still low because of the rain. You can see the areas here. Now they haven't updated this yet today. So uh, we'll have to wait for today's current map. We've got showers aplenty out and about. Eugene, especially all the way up to the north, there, Corvallis, Roseburg, a couple of scattered showers pass through. And we'll continue the chance for showers as we progress through tonight and into tomorrow. And then Wednesday, the big super blood moon total eclipse. More on that, plus your complete forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Chevy. This morning, Andrew Shearer was sworn in as the interim chief of police at the Springfield Police Department. NBC 16's Hadley Heck was there, joins us in the studio now after speaking with Springfield leaders. Hadley. Kendall, Chief Shear is joining the Springfield Police Department after former Chief Rick Lewis has submitted his resignation effective in June. He's currently on leave during an ongoing personnel investigation. And today I talked with Springfield PD insiders who have more on the future of the department during this transition. It's going to be important to reconcile the historic the kind of historical dysfunction that has taken place within Springfield. Scott McKee, a former Springfield police lieutenant, shares his perspective on the department. And current Springfield leaders are prioritizing the reconciliation of lawsuits, scrutiny, and scandal. I make a promise to you all that I will do everything in my power to ensure we provide police service to the city of Springfield in a manner that increases trust and legitimacy through transparency, accountability, and respect for every individual's constitutional rights. I really enjoyed and was inspired by his comments about the importance of just trust and collaboration to make sure that that, uh, that history of being able to have, be a professional department is going forward. The Springfield Police Department is hard at work attempting to boost transparency within the community. Most police departments have a difficult time scrutinizing the work of their own employees. And I think they use the wrong barometer to do that. And so with the, if you have the public involved in that process, I think you get a much better result and it's more critical and they end up seeing more improvement. Chief Shearer plans to hold himself and others in the line of duty accountable. We will continually own and learn from our shortcomings, our mistakes and our failings. The job presents Chief Shearer with an opportunity to make a change. The good men and women of the Springfield Police Department are starving for um, direction. And so it's a good time for Chief Shearer to come in, um, set a tone, and um, reconcile this stuff that's in the closet. Now, earlier this morning when Chief Shearer was sworn in, he said taking this position is an honor. Kendall, back to you.
Thank you, Hadley. Well, this week, Springfield police officers are expected to start training on how to use body cameras. The city council approved the budget for the cameras last year. The department will train with the cameras for several days this week. The department expects their night shift officers to start using the cameras on Wednesday. And tomorrow marks one year since George Floyd was murdered by former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. And Congress is unlikely to reach a deal on police reform by President Biden's deadline. Democrats and Republicans have been negotiating for weeks on the terms of the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, but they still do not have a deal. The hangup reportedly hinges on the question of qualified immunity that protects police officers from most civil lawsuits. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker is is part of the negotiations. We're making good progress, hopeful progress, but we still have uh, some work, a lot of work so to do. Talks are expected to continue this week. Biden will meet with George Floyd's family tomorrow. Turning now to coronavirus coverage, new rules in Oregon announced by Governor Kate Brown today. The changes will allow for businesses, venues, and faith institutions in counties in the lower risk category to have areas specifically for vaccinated people. So let's break down those changes. Vaccinated sections with no physical distancing or capacity limits will be allowed for fully vaccinated people ages 16 and older who provide verification of their vaccination status. Businesses, venues, and faith institutions can still require additional health and safety protocols in vaccinated sections, such as mask wearing. All children up to 15 wearing a face covering will be able to be inside of vaccinated sections if they are with their fully vaccinated parent or guardian. The Portland Trailblazers are ready to debut a new vaccinated section at the Moda Center, making them the first indoor sports venue in Oregon to welcome fans back to vaccinated sections this week. But it all hinges on final approval of Multnomah County's vaccination equity plan. County officials say they hope to make the move later this week. Covering the coast, South Coast Food Share is a regional food bank serving Coos and Curry counties. They supply food for 48 local partners and pantries. NBC 16's Amanda Slee talked with them about a program that was put on hold because of the pandemic, but it's coming back soon. Fresh Choice Market is a program run by Oregon Coast Community Action. It ran for two years before being put on pause because of the pandemic. Now Orca is revamping the program. It will be back open later this year and will be expanded. This is where we have fresh food available to families in need or families who are experiencing food insecurity at the locations where they already are um, accessing um, services. The services will be located at Orca's Head Start locations from Brookings to Reedsport. The goal is to make Fresh Choice Market, especially the healthy foods, more accessible. The fresh and healthy choices will include beets and turnips, but not everybody knows how to prepare them. We'll have recipe cards of here's what you do with this. Here's how you can prepare this for your family. So it'll be one, you know, one more step for them that we're helping to create that meal for that family that's both healthy, nutritious. Before it was put on hold, the Fresh Choice Market was only at some locations. So how will this revamped program look now? We're revamping this program by putting um, the central location here at our South Coast Food Share, which is in Coos County, and we will be creating a referral system, and then we're gonna branch out to each of the Head Start sites. The soft launch for the Fresh Choice Market will be in September, with a full reopening once pandemic restrictions are lifted. Reporting in Coos County, I'm Amanda Slee. Coming up on your only local news at 530, how a local women's tackle football team is encouraging other women to join the sport. And we have rain right now. We're going to get a chance for rain a couple more times this week. And then a big warm-up is coming this weekend. Your complete forecast, which includes the super blood moon total eclipse, is coming up next.